Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's been a while. You remember how to do this? I just uh, I do an eight ball and talk, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just like last time. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Passionate DJ Podcast. I'm your host, David Michael, and this is the homie, the one and only Trip Turlington. What up? Welcome back to studio, buddy. Yeah, thank you. It's been you. a little while. Absolutely. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Well, yeah, I'm sorry I missed the uh, the the grand comeback, uh, uh, the relaunch and all that. Uh, Life happens. We understand. That it does. That <laughs> it does. Uh, as much as I would have loved to have been a, a part of that one, uh, just, you know, as uh, anybody who's fallen, been following the show for so long, like just life is still a little bit hectic but i'm one step closer uh this is my final semester of school so so (laughs) so close yeah unless i just totally shit the bed i'm gonna be graduating (laughs) at the end of december so (laughs) well i'm especially excited that you came over today not only because it's been a while but you brought toys i certainly that's always fun (laughs) (laughs) so we teased this a little bit uh somewhere i think it was on the podcast yeah uh maybe it was on youtube or something but um where we mentioned that you Got this Denon Prime set up. Right. So you actually have bought the Denon DJ X1800 mixer and yep. a pair of SC5000 players. Correct. Uh, to make for the full Prime setup. And this is the uh, sort of, um, I don't know, the, the boat rocking setup of uh, the past year or so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hashtag change your rider is the, was the big uh, promotional kind of thing uh, push behind that right right um and the reason being is because it really brings that kind of you know pioneer cdj style of um layout and everything but really adds like features that are that really make you want to consider right <laughs> like what am i really doing with my money here right right um considering the price and everything and the some of the features that you get and so you got this and um of course, the first thing we said is, let's go create some content. Let's record videos. <laughs> right. Let's talk about it. Uh, so we had this idea to actually have a, a, a podcast episode um, right. about it uh, where we can actually just kind of dive in, uh, maybe play a couple of tunes, you know, not have like a full hour set, but just kind of try some things out, um, try out some of those features, some of the claims maybe that uh, Denon puts in their promotional materials and things and just see how we really like it because neither of us is really – had this set up to mess with like intimately. Right. 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 So, uh, you know, I've seen it before and, Oh, that looks nice. I really like the finish and and stuff, but this is the first time, at least for me personally, that I'll be able to kind of like, what would it be like to DJ with this? Right. Right. Uh, so real quick before we, we move on to that, um, all that to say this, uh, you know, we're going to be coming out with a lot of Denon DJ gear uh, uh, content suddenly. Uh, none of this is sponsored by Denon. So uh, we're bringing this in because Trip has it now and we're, we want to play with it. So we're right. going to be honest, uh, even brutally so if it comes to it, if there's something we don't like. Yep. Uh, there's no sponsorship dollars or anything involved here. So you're getting what we really think yep. out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, but so bef- before we dive into that, just like, what have you been up to? Cause you haven't <laughs> been on the show since before our break. Right, so it's right. been what, since the spring or something, something like that. Yeah. So, so. How, how was your summer, man? Um, busy. Just, I mean, everything is like super busy. Uh, career is a uh, full, full steam ahead and, um, everything going on, uh, you know, at home as far as, you know, kids and, uh, you know, just all of the above school takes up a lot of that time. And so, um, yeah, just trying to, uh, you know, do the dang thing and live life and, uh, been trying to make some time for making music, but that just, you know, it just isn't. It seems like we always say that. Yeah. It just yeah. isn't in the car. It hasn't been in the cards, but, um, you know, recently got a couple of phone calls, you know, where people are starting to poke and prod me and, uh, you know, given, trying to give me the proper motivation to do so. So, uh, you, you had one of those calls while we were setting up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you writing? And <laughs> why aren't we releasing it? Uh, well, uh, so, um, uh, but, uh, and then as far as DJing, um, you know, nothing of, uh, nothing really of note. Um, you know, a couple of smaller gigs and stuff like that. Uh, uh, if you're ever in Cincinnati, um, there's a, a crew that, uh, does, uh, something called, uh, sunshine sessions on, on Sundays. Mm-hmm. And they, they've got a couple of different venues that they do them in. And, um, 
uh, the the one venue that I went to um, or that I played at, it was uh, really cool. Really small hole in the wall bar in downtown Cincinnati. Hmm. Um, but you walk past the bar and there's a door that goes outside and it's a courtyard that, you know, I mean, it's not big at all. It's big enough for a bar smaller than this setup right here. Okay. And then, you know, a set of tables and you might be able to fit 40, 50 people. But once you fit 40 or 50 people, I mean, it, it's a really sweaty, intimate vibe. Like people really get down on it and they do it during the day. So, you know, the, the sun is shining, uh, the sun cool. is shining down into the courtyard. Uh, they set up bubble machines and, you know, all kinds of I stuff. I miss a good so. daytime show, man. I haven't yeah. really, you know, we used to have uh, Sunday fun day here in Dayton. And, yeah, and absolutely. That's defunct. Now they recently had a, a reunion, like a reunion. Thing, but, yep. Um, yeah, we, we kind of lost the spot and that just never came back. But yep. like my, for years I've been, I'm sure I've said it on the show. I'm like, I oh, really yeah. want a patio, like a <laughs> rooftop yes, yes. patio yep. in the city that like overlooking this, especially now because Dayton's kind of starting to build again. And right. so there's a lot of new, like cool new construction and stuff. And it would just be a neat backdrop for something like that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, I mean, so outside of that, I haven't really been up to much as far as DJ. Um, but, uh, so it was interesting when, um, a friend of the show, you know, approached us and said, Hey, I've got a rig. If you guys are, if you guys are interested. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I jumped on it. It's a, so it, it so it is a used rig. I didn't buy it brand new, right? Um, and I, I did get a, a, a decent price on it, um, but the going rate from what I've been seeing, like on eBay and stuff like that, um, you can get exactly what you see here: uh, the X eighteen hundred and the and the two SC five thousands for around two thousand dollars. I say around because you know depending on the on the. Um, uh, uh, on the condition of the units or, you yeah, know, how far it is and, the, yeah, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've seen them as high as 25. I've seen them as low as, you know, about 1800 or so. Um, so um, it's, uh, it, but for, for what we got here, um, I, I just, I couldn't pass it up. Um, especially because, you know, for all the hype that was around it. And when you look at the spec sheet feature for feature, you know, I've been saying for how many years I'm a pioneer fanboy, you know, and I, I mean, I still drool when I think of the Nexus 2 setup that I'll never have. Right. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, so for me, it this was helps, though. Right. Right. Well, so that and that was one of the reasons that I kind of jumped on it was, you know, uh, do I want to flip it? You know, I mean, for the price that I got it at or, you know, is this going to replace, you know, my Pioneer DDJ SZ? So you're not really sure either way. No, so not far. yet. Um, um, and that's cool. So we're in. So the audience is getting like you in the middle of decision making <laughs> right, mode, but right. the gear's already here. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. This, this is kind of a cool time to be talking about this. Yeah, for sure. Because like for for me, I mean, this for all intent and purposes, this is uh, an unboxing you know, type of scenario for me. I, um, I, it, you know, I've played with it a little bit, um, but no more than just kind of mixing a couple of tracks together. Is it functional? Does it work? Do yeah. all the lights come on? Yes. And, you know, okay, fine. I think I've turned them on a grand total of three times um, until I brought them over here. And then um, when we started looking at like <laughs> spec sheets and stuff, oh well, maybe we want to, or no, it was uh, we were trying to hook up the uh, the microphones. Well, yeah. So let's let's <laughs> let's just talk about our re our recording setup right now. Right, I guess right, right. because uh, some people are going to be watching on YouTube, some people are just going to be listening in the car audio. and stuff. Yeah. So I want to make sure that the uh, the audio listeners really know what's going on here. Sure. Um, and if you are one of those uh, listening, to, you know, on Apple Podcasts or something like that, uh, if you go and check out the YouTube version, you'll be able to actually see the rig and see what we're doing here. But uh, we'll make sure it all translates. But anyhow, uh, basically, we, we kind of went back and forth on, like, how do we want to record this episode of the podcast? Because we need to be able to get all of the sound output to my mixer that I use for the final mix of the show, right. which is over there on the right side. Um, but we also wanted to be able to monitor our voices, but we also wanted to be able to cue mixes <laughs> on the mixer and that proved to be kind of complicated depending on how we wanted to set that up we were talking about doing should we do a send or return setup yeah. or should we do this or that to make sure that we could hear 
cueing and our voices and eventually we were just like wait let's just plug straight into the mixer right so <laughs> to the denon mixer <laughs> right so we actually have our uh, microphones our headset microphones plugged into uh you know mic one and mic two on the denon mixer itself uh, one's right on top it's an xlr connection and then there's a quarter inch uh, mic on the back and so that's how you're hearing us now and uh it was kind of cool because when we first turned it on we noticed that there was kind of a gating effect where it was cutting out the sound unless we were speaking loudly mm -hmm. uh, which is probably great for a noisy venue but is terrible for recording a podcast in a studio oh, so right. you know it was like <laughs> if we would talk like quietly like this then half of it was going in and out so i flipped through the utility menu and it said oh there's a, a gate threshold and we changed it um, and so we found three or four things like that that was like, oh, Denon thought of this. And so it, my immediate first impression is that there's a there's good attention to detail on, well, on the stuff. Well, we got to back up a little bit. We do. <laughs> we do. Because it wasn't because that simple. It, it was not that simple because just to get to that, um, so uh, none of the firmware had been updated when I bought it. And the problem was because we decided to record the mic through the Denon mixer, we, we weren't able to hear ourselves because the, the mixer didn't support uh, uh, monitor uh, headphones cueing of the mic. Right. Which you wouldn't necessarily care about if you're doing a wedding, but we care about. Because it's a podcast. And we looked it up and, it was, oh, this was added. And then somebody else complained about this. And <laughs> right. that started... The <laughs> firmware update. So, um, so strike one for Denon. Um, <laughs> um, so it took three tries to get uh, the uh, firmware update to uh, take on the X eighteen hundred. So, um, I was uh, I, I was getting really worried there because uh, the first time that tried to load it and uh, all the lights were on and every, and then it just seemed to just get stuck. Um, so um, after it sat there for, I mean, we probably waited every bit of an hour. And um, so then I finally called it and pulled the plug, turned it off, and then started it back up in update mode and then tried again. And it got stuck again. Then that time, did it again. And the third time, everything took and everything was working like it should have and, and everything worked out fine. So then that's when we started going through. Uh, the utility menu and found uh, some of these really cool settings that, uh, like David said, it was really cool that, you know, Denon thought of, so, uh, of some stuff like that. Now, um, I, I have to pause you there mm -hmm. because you said that. Um, <laughs> we cannot officially recommend ever, ever, <laughs> ever, 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 <laughs> ever shutting off any piece of hardware that's in the middle of doing a firmware update. That's right. a really great way to to brick a piece that's, of hardware. I think the word brick came out of my mouth at uh -huh. least three times. <laughs> and, and that's why we waited an hour to do it. And we right. wanted to make, you know, make sure that it was a last resort thing because Tripp and I both have an IT background and we know better. So right. we waited and waited and waited. <laughs> and then we did some research and we saw some other people had similar problems on the, the Denon forums and stuff. And they re restarted it until it worked, and that worked out for them. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we crossed our fingers, and then it finally did. Yeah, and and uh, and credit out to uh, DJ City. Yeah, uh, they put out a, a YouTube video that actually showed the hardware and the computer program and what everything is supposed to look like while it's updating, and that's how we knew that the mixer got stuck because all these lights were frozen in time, whereas the lights on on his unit were, you know, it, it was showing progress. There's kind of two different sides to this because we've got the players and we've got the mixer. Right. Um, so oh, and, and before we go any further, the firmware on the players was smooth. Oh yeah, bam. Smooth as silk. Was smooth as silk. It no, not an issue. One. Yeah. So, um, so I guess we could uh, maybe let's just read through the the quick list of features here just sure. to uh, update the audience on what we're actually messing with. So, we've got the uh, Denon SC5000 players, and this would be kind of equivalent to the Pioneer, uh, you know, Nexus CDJs. Um, and it's got a 7-inch uh, HD display, which, by the way, looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when they say HD display, I mean, it looks every bit as good as my Retina display on my MacBook Pro. Agreed. Um 24-bit, you know, 96 kilohertz sound, all that kind of stuff you expect from pro-level digital gear by now. Um, the really cool thing about this, and probably the biggest selling point for me personally, would be the dual-layer functionality. Yeah. 
Um, and what that means is that it, it, the player literally has two sets of audio outputs and it can play two tracks at the same time simultaneously and you can kind of switch between you know two different decks in a similar way that you would in Serato or Tractor or something like that, uh, but it's actually hardware and will play those two tracks on the unit. Right. Um, so effectively, you have what equates to a four deck setup here. Right. So for the for the price of less than two CDJs, which is really piles on that value. Right. And and uh, to their credit, Pioneer has built some of that functionality into some of their controllers, uh, like my DDJ SZ does that. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about, you know, taking things up to that next level, you know, to that and trying to match the, the, uh, apples to apples comparison, uh, of a Nexus two setup, yeah. you know, the, the, the CDJs just don't do that. And it's, it's impressive that, you know, for years we, us and other people have complained that it's like, okay, these, the CDJs cost a bazillion dollars and right. it's the pro setup and I have a lot of mo motivation to get them. But at the same time, it's like if I upgrade to them, I'm losing functionality out of Tractor, Serato, whatever. Right. And it's, it's a hard sell. Yeah. You're like, what, you mean I got to go to two decks? Right. If you're a techno DJ that plays four decks, that's you know, you're going to give it the finger and walk away. Right? Yep, exactly. Well, Denon says, we got you which right. is pretty cool. Um, and they're starting to kind of match similar functionality that soft you used to have to have the software right. for. Um, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. Um, it plays uncompressed stuff, so flack and wave and all that. Has uh, Each one has eight pads along the bottom here, performance pads. Um, they're RGB backlit, and you can use those for cues and loops and rolls and all that kind of stuff. And... They feel great. Um, they f they're not um, super stiff like an like an Akai or something. Right. But they're not clicky. They're like yep. right in the middle. Yep. Um, kind of fleshy is how I. Yeah, yeah. How I. Oop. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Trip can't wait to get started. <laughs> <laughs> um, each uh, jog wheel is eight inches, mm -hmm. which is massive and great. Yep. Um, it has the RGB ring around each wheel, and that's actually customizable. Uh, and it also has a center display in the middle, which is customizable. And uh, you took the time to add the Passionate DJ logo right, right smack there. in the middle, <laughs> which is circular. So it just fits in there. And it looks super cool. So then we customized the ring around it to be blue and it matched. And it's actually a pretty cool look. Oh, yeah. I'm not hating it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, uh, uh, and the cool part is, is that it's super simple to, to change that. I mean, you just take, you know, a 600 by 600 uh, PNG file. Um, of whatever logo you want and uh, put it on the uh, in the engine at the root of the engine uh, folder of whatever SD card that you're using. And then you, so whenever you are using that SD card, then that's the logo it will use. So if you have multiple uh, thumb drives and, you know, for different monikers or for different mm. businesses or whatever, then you, you plug that one in. And when you select that uh that drive and that's the logo it will load so you could do cool stuff with that like if you if you have like dark brooding techno then maybe you make that like a dark red version of your logo whereas you if you play deep house then it's purple or something else and so exactly. that you know as soon as you slap that in oh whoop, whoops <laughs> <laughs> right but the other cool thing about the denons is they have like a bazillion inputs so i mean mm -hmm. three three usb inputs and one sd input on each one yeah it's super slick like i mean it, uh, the sd the i mean I, I just haven't seen you know a whole bunch of even like the the higher end controllers with so many connections yeah um so uh, here in the front, there's like a, a little lip, and this is what's also really cool. Is if you look, I'm, I'm so another. Uh, here's a point four Denon, is that if you can see my hand right here. There's actual. It's actually backlit. Yeah. So under so, the the very front of the or unit, underlit, I suppose. Yeah. Is the, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a Fast and Furious style. Right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, just a little bit of lighting under, so the, the front of the unit where traditionally you would stick a CD, CD in. Um, it, that's where the SD and USB inputs are, but it's kind of recessed 
inside there, and there's the light that you're talking about lights it up so that you can actually see. You know, if you're in a dark club or doing a wedding or something, you can see it, but it's not like lighting the place up. Right, and it's and, and I like the fact that it's recessed because you know um, U, uh, USB sticks come in all different shapes and sizes. So like if you've got something that's you know a good two or three inches, it's not going to be sticking out of the front yeah. and then potentially breaking or breaking right. off into the into the port. Yeah, especially in a I mean, can you imagine like when you were playing the Oak and Fold show, how oh, how crowded it got in the booth for <laughs> right. you know, every now and right, then? Right. Like just one little swipe would, would ruin everyone's day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's the kind of stuff like as I'm noticing more and more as I look at it, like just little attention to detail things yep. like that that little, are really nice. Little little hints of uh some uh, ingenious engineering going in. Like for example, <clears throat> the the mixer and the players. So the the top surface where you do all your things, all your DJ stuff, is one size, and then the base is a little bit shorter. So the top kind of hangs over a little bit. And what I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but what effectively happens is it builds these little channels between the players and the mixer that you can run cables through, which is great for us because we run them here through the front and right. have all our connections up here. So it quickly becomes spaghetti up here, but <laughs> that gives a nice little clean little channel. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I just I notice a lot of little things like that, and also just the way it's trimmed out, like the the feet have like nice little chrome or aluminum or something uh trim like around the the base and like they just look really sharp yeah they they definitely took it to um it, it, like you can tell that they definitely took the time to engineer this thing and, and to mimic enough of the pioneer players um to, so that it, it it's familiar so you know the the the, the eight inch jog wheel is right smack dab in the middle. You know your your um, yeah. uh, your uh, pitch bend, uh, track skipping, um, uh, the uh, wheel tension, all of that. So there's plenty of different buttons. Uh, your media eject, uh, source buttons, all of those kinds of things are all in places that are intuitive for people who yeah. have been on Pioneer gear for a long time. Um, you know, there's vinyl mode uh, there, you know, the uh, master key lock, all of all of those kinds of things. Um, and not only that, but like there's very few of those things, if anything, missing. Right. Like it's right. not only is everything in an intuitive place where you expect it, but you're lo you're also like, oh, these have that. Like right. it's just they you can tell by looking at the layout and stuff at, you know, like at a glance that Denon wanted to make sure that you didn't feel like you were missing out on anything if you bought these. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Feature-wise. Yeah, and I mean, the for somebody who, who I've played around with a, a lot of Pioneer gear, and, um, it, you know, it, it was it, the, the few times that I've turned it on, and actually, you know, try to navigate the screen. It's it's super intuitive. Like it, you're you're not going to be totally lost. You know, going like you know, just trying to drill down. The icons are are pretty intuitive. Everything is touch screen, but there's also physical back, forward, and a um, and a, a turn dial on the right yeah. side of the screen. So if you prefer the tactile, you know, physical buttons and knobs and stuff like that, you can navigate that thing. way. They give you options. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's the other thing. It's like, it, however you want to be a DJ, like they want to cater to that, it seems. So like, yeah. even when it comes down to like the pitch adjustment, like you've got these nice, like long throw pitch um, faders, but then there's also pitch bend buttons at the bottom. So right. if you, if you like came into this with digital DJing in like 2007 and you just like to do a little bit of pitch bend on like controller style, right. they're like, okay, right. here, you know what I mean? And so it's like, but it doesn't, it's not like it takes up a bunch of real estate. Right. right. They just put a I couple mean, little buttons. That's literally what, an inch and a half yeah. by half an inch. So yeah, it's like yeah. they put it right under there so that you know, as soon as you glance at it, you're like, oh, or I could do this, Right. you know? Yep, that's very you know ergonomically sound and and so on. Um, uh, the other thing is it has the uh, uh, LAN link, so you can connect it with Ethernet. Yep. And the coolest part about that to me is that, uh, and we'll get to this when we talk about the mixer, but the mixer has a hub built yes. in. Yes. Yes. So you don't. It, the really shitty thing about mixing with like a hybrid um, CDJ plus laptop kind of configuration is that hub hubs yep uh so like sometimes tony and i would play like on 
a couple of CDJs, and then like uh, we would need like a, a tractor controller or yep. something to like load tracks and do effects and stuff. Right. And it, as soon as you have more than the players, you have to add a hub. <laughs> right. And right. then if you have a MacBook, you might only have two, or if you're like me, you have none <laughs> now. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So it's without a dongle. <laughs> yeah, without <laughs> putting some kind of adapter there. Yeah, so yeah. you know, it's it's nice to Denon's like, who wants to fuck with that, right? right so they just right. put it into the mixer. Here, here's a bunch of ports. Just. Yep, now so, you just have cables like everything else. Yeah, and for those who are watching, so um, I'm going to lift up the back. And so right here, you can see it's actually a four-port uh, Ethernet hub. And then there's also another one for a PC link. So um, I haven't been able to really dig into all of that and, and its features and functionality and all of that. I assume that some of that is uh, based around, like, you know, if you're going to do... Um, you know, mixing using DVS and your laptop and, and um, using their Prime. Or using Denon Prime on right, the laptop. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but I have not gotten anywhere near any of that yet. What um, I have found is pretty cool. So there, there because there's also four, uh, you could technically have four of these SC5000 pr uh, players and then link them all up in that hub. But... If you only have two and you're going to take advantage of the dual layer capabilities, then all you need is two Ethernet cables to go into that yeah. hub. Uh, player one goes into port one and it will uh, automatically assign channels one and two. And then this, uh, then uh, your player two goes into port three and then it assigns it to three and four. Super simple. Like it's, it's straight to the point. And if you, if you reverse that, into two and four instead of one and three, mm. then it just uh, flips it. So mm. layer it flips nice. the layers between channels one and two and three and four. So it's it, it it's it's really interesting how you know they they really did like build so much flexibility into it, but you can also pretty much get away with just plug and play. Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of you know uh, baby giraffe kind of <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, but um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it all it made pretty much. A good sense. I mean, within ten minutes of firing things up and just kind of poking at it. So, yeah. Uh, the other two major uh, kind of bullet points that they uh, put on the promotional materials: they have stage link connection, and that's so that you can control show effects and lighting mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And uh, something that was added later in the after a firmware up, firmware update or two the actual ability to import record box libraries. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to testing that because I've never tried that yet. Yeah, same. Cool. So we'll definitely try it. We'll try that live. And if it goes terribly, everybody will watch <laughs> us crash and burn. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the basics of the players. I think we can come back to the mixer, but maybe do you want to play a couple of tunes and just fool around with the players themselves for now and just try sure. some of these features out? Sure. So... Um So uh, first things first, I mean that it, like right here, um, that uh, the the latency it, it it does not feel you know super um, uh, you know bogged down or delayed or anything like that. I mean I touch it and it's and it's uh, and it's there. Um, I do notice they have the tension uh, adjustment on here, like right above, kind of where, in where it is for Pioneer. Yep, um, yep. Does that, I mean that's does that make a big difference? We got light. And then heavy. So okay. Yeah, it, it's, you can it, tell, but it's not a huge. Yeah, it's it, it, on on my SZ. I did notice that it's a much uh, tighter tension when you uh, when yeah. you apply it to heavier. So I, I didn't think it was as much of a. This actually literally makes it feel heavier as opposed to like it's fe meeting resistance. Resistance like yep. breaks. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. One of the cool things uh, that you mentioned in the beginning when we were talking about the uh, um, the logo is uh, it, when you you can go into these settings and the actual um, ring, the color ring around uh, the platter, you can actually set that. Um, now you can't get into like hex, you know, you can't like you know uh, assign your Coca Cola red color to it or yeah, you get like eight choices or something right, like that. right. So, um, but I mean, it, it, what's really cool about that is you can apply that to each layer of the device. So, um, so right now this is a purple layer, but I've assigned 
this layer to be red. So now, regardless of what layer I'm on, I know um, where right. I'm at. Makes it very obvious. Right. So the other cool thing, when you come off of a channel, then the ring was turning white. Oh, it might be because we customized that. Right. And Could maybe, be. Maybe we set it to the same or, right. or something. Right. So yeah, it, um, is, it is supposed to show like when you when you come off of a particular deck, the the light ring changes color, kind of indicating that it's not live anymore. Yeah. So just kind of poking around on. Oh. Yep. So I think that's it. Yep, that's what okay. it was. So, so it's it called on-air mode. On-air mode, and that, that was just a setting that, that got reset. So that, that's one cool thing, too, that I've, I've noticed so far, like just through the setup and just this first couple of minutes that we spent with it, is like we've had to find things in the menus and things like that we didn't know if it even supported. And right. It didn't take us more than a few seconds to find anything so far. Right. Like everything is really – it's designed very intelligently. I oh, mean, yeah. It's just to where you're like – Hmm, if I want to adjust this setting, it would be here. Yep, there it is. You know, it's, I mean, it's <laughs> right. If you halfway know what you're talking about, it, you pretty much can find anything. Yep, for sure. Um, so, um, one of the things that I did play with a little bit, um, because one of the things that I do a lot is, um, and and for better or for worse, it's just my it's my it's my style. Um, but when I'm queuing something, if I've got a hot queue set up. Um, then what I like to do is, you know, as I've got a track playing, then I will sit here and tap that uh, that hot cue. Uh, to, oh, like to the, the four count preceding yeah, as, it or something? Yeah, as, as a tap. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> well, the problem that I've ran into with this is that it doesn't... So it's not that it's not responsive, but it is not the same. Okay. So I'll try to... Uh, that one okay so if i said you can sync them if you want i won't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> we're not here to show off our mixing skills right right <laughs> so <laughs> one thing that i really do love about this and i mean uh, Pioneer does it too, but just the resolution and the the animation of the of the waveform. Yeah, it's super smooth. Real smooth, really sharp. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, just have it full volume so that you guys can hear what I am hearing. So if I hit So that's two tracks playing at the same time. Now if I hit this So that's very responsive. Now if I go like this Oh that so that looks like quantized. Right, right. So, so I, I wonder if that's I a figured, setting. I figured it was a quantization setting, but again, having just touched it, um, that was one point for Pioneer to me uh, with the SZ. Out of the box, it didn't matter. Quantization, like I, I was able to just beat the hell out of that button out of the box, and it just it responded to me. Gotcha. Whereas this did not feel as responsive it, it was it, and i like i said i figured it was a quantization setting i just had not gotten to it yet well let's see if we can find a quantization so if you hold down the view button the, up there and oh. the, yep oh i see and then yeah. that'll bring up the preferences gotcha. menu. okay um looping uh is pretty much exactly how you would expect it to go um, it has a manual setting um, that you can, you know, get in and out. So it's totally up to you. You can move the loop. Um, and uh, the uh, sorry, I, I touched the <laughs> platter while I was. Done. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so um, all of the all of the buttons here uh, line up just the same as it would in in like Serato and and Record Box DJ and all of that. So it's got a quantization range, but I don't see one that says disable. Mm, gotcha. Let's see if that feels any better, though. So that might be better. Let's get over to where the... Let's see, can I hold... 
Oop, nope, I skipped a whole track. Okay. <laughs> uh, I knew better than that. We'll just play no, no, whatever no, this track that is. One. That, no? that one will get us He's... taken down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. So I've already forgotten that you can use the touch screen. I, yep. I went straight for the knobs. I'm telling you, it, 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 I was doing the same thing because, you know, that's just what I was used to. So if I hit, if I hold beat jump, will that be like a seek? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yep. I can just tap. Sweet. Okay. So you can tap a beat jump and it skips ahead by like t a couple beats. Sorry, I'm log, uh, lining up that first beat. Hit Q. So that seems good. So will it? Oh yeah. Now will it still do, better? Will that still work if you have a track going and we have it in sync? You know. Sure. Let's try that out. So. Yeah. So that's definitely quantized. So I'm tap, 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 tap. Right. So if I hit, turn that quantize off on the screen. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Let me make sure I'm actually at the start of that beat, just to... Do you, like, hold to set a hot cue? Um, or... To set one, you just push the button. Shift and oh, wait, pushing wait. it again takes the button, takes that away. Cool. Yep. There we go. Okay. Okay. So that does work. Sorry, I took it off sync. I was just testing to see if that still worked. Well, yeah. Yeah, see, see. Why is that not syncing up? Oh, you know why? Because this is not set as a master. It doesn't know what to sync to. Maybe they both have to be on. There we go. Okay, let's try that. Well, that doesn't seem right. What am I missing there? So let's try it with contacts now. Yeah. I'm not understanding why that's happening. Yeah. So, like I said, that was one of the things that I, I first noticed, but it, just from my personal workflow. Like, I mean, because, like, what... So the workaround I could do is... Wait, I just realized something too. We probably needed to do some sort of analyzing of these tracks before trying to sync them. Oh yeah, That's probably yeah. why it's losing time. Yeah, for sure. Well, but and from what I understand, I mean, I could be wrong, but um, I believe that the that these players they 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 do the analysis real time, or or, or you know, so you load up a track and then it figures and it things. Does it. Out. Yeah, and it, so it it figures these things out. But yeah, like I just I haven't totally figured out. Uh, you know where that where that sits and I mean, it's, it's definitely not syncing it like I have to manually adjust it all right so it seems good now So let's try, let's try doing a mix on a single player with dual layer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. So um, go into music file. I don't know why that sync didn't seem like it's working. I don't know if I didn't engage it properly or if there's some analysis that didn't happen or what, because yeah. it should have been more steady than that. But. Right. And, and that, so that's, that's definitely one part of all of this that like I, you know, like I said, this is for all intent and purposes of uh, an unboxing for me. So I just, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't um, need no stinking sink. But. <laughs> right. So, so we're going to start on uh track or on uh, channel three, which is, Player two, uh, layer one. So that's the sound that we had going on. Okay, so Trip is now bringing in track four. So I am literally DJing with one 
with one player on the mixer right now. All right, so if this one on the left died, you could still get away with finishing the set. Yep. And with the assignable cross, or with the assignable uh, uh, channel faders, then you can set these these two up to be, you know, crossfade. However, in whatever configuration you like. Yeah. So it feels just like you got a track on the left and right. You yep. just can't see both waveforms at the same time. Try to bring one in on the left over here, but you're going to hear me beat match it live, so beware. <laughs> oh, that went too bad. Realistically, if you really wanted to save money, you could have just bought that and that. Right, <laughs> right. One deck and been all right. Well, especially it because... It would have looked weird, but you could do it. Well, yeah, sure. It, well, especially because I've got, you know, two technique... Uh, uh, sorry. I've got two Technic <laughs> uh, 1200 uh, Mark IIs at home that, you know, if, if you go back in the podcast uh, back catalog... Uh, you'll know that I've heavily modified them, much to many people's chagrin and other people dig it. You know, it's it's one of those things you either, it, you know, it's either a sacred cow or, you know, it's yours right. to do whatever the hell you want with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, all that to say, um, you know, so if I wanted to, uh, from what I understand, the Denon X1800 mixer acts as a, um, a sound card um uh, for Serato. So if I wanted to, I could just have one SC5000 Prime player as well as um, uh, my two uh, turntables and a, and a laptop. Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and a laptop and then be able to um, do DVS and yeah. have, you know, two digital uh, players going at the same time. So I could still get away with four deck mixing that way. Uh, so, you know, it does a couple other little things. Uh, where's the deck switch again over here? Um, for the layers? Yeah, because it's still playing on four, it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a purple Oh, button. layer yep. right there, yeah. Yep. There it's, you go. <laughs> it's bright and it says layer. Okay. So it also has, you know, if you, if you do mobile gigs or some, stuff like that, it's got a sensor button and it just kind of will keep the track in time but reverse the, the beat or for however long you hold it down so yep. like a one of those yep and you could also i'm pretty sure you can like quantize that as well I like that yep which and is so good that for way like is, bleeping like, out curse words and mother stuff like guff. Like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> cool uh let's see what else do we want to talk about on the players themselves well uh Besides the players themselves, I think, you know, as a system, I think one of the, the cool things about it for me is that, you know, having play, maybe it's just that it's something new and different, um, but it's really caught my eye um, and it's really got my attention, you know, because for as much as I pine over, oh, I really wish I had a Nexus 2 set up, um, but, um, you know, bringing this in, it, it's it's just been really different. Uh, it, it, it's been a fresh look for me because when I set it up in my studio, I mean, the thing is bright. I mean, we're in, you know, a pretty well lit, yeah. you know, studio environment. But when I turn the lights off, I mean, my studio glows. Like, yeah, and when you first turned it on, it, it uh, when with no settings on, everything's just, green. Brrr, yeah, like super green. <laughs> and like we we gave Roland a lot of shit for their like super duper like UFO green stuff. <laughs> right, right. But it this looks so cool when it, yeah when yeah. it's all green and, and started up. I really liked it. But in general, I like the color scheme that they use. Like even on the mixer, instead of having like green, yellow, red, it's what green, white, blue. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And like 
let me clip it so I can see. Yeah, so so blue would be your reds. Right, right. And then yeah, uh, white is your kind of in-between, like warning lights, and then it's green. And it's just a really nice, like, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, having that cooler color scheme just is like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Easier it, on the eyes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And and more attention grabbing. I think they're, they're, that was most likely on purpose. You know, because, I mean, I don't know if it's just that, all of Pioneer's color scheme and layout and all, and, and, you know, whatever their stock LEDs are that they've been using for however many years. I mean, maybe that's all, that's all just stuff that we've gotten so used to that now that when you see something different, it's like, Ooh, you know, <laughs> but, um, but it's definitely brighter. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the first time I plugged it in, I was like, Holy crap, you know, <laughs> my retinas. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, like I said, I mean, just even like, you know, the undercarriage, you know, lighting, uh, near the, um, the USB drives, uh, just the layout of the buttons. And, and once you get used to that color scheme and the color scheme is customizable. So like all these RGB buttons, uh, for like your hot cues and, uh, the, the platter rings and all of that stuff, even, um, when you use the link and it goes into the X1800, uh, then your Q buttons actually turn the color of the layers that you've assigned to the player. Yeah, so it becomes very obvious. It's like, hey, it's this channel. Right. It so, just, like, yeah. you know, what we uh, looks like we've got two of them set to purple. Um, so if I went back and changed one of these from purple. So now this Q button has turned green. So if, if I'm on the red layer, then the Q button for channel four is red. And then... When I switch back to this other layer, uh, then the green, uh, the this is the green layer, so it turns right. this button green. And, and when you bring the, the the channel fader up, then the light around the player goes green too. So right. everything is like kind of communicating and and just making it very obvious at a glance, like what's happening right. to minimize those like oopsie moments where you weren't paying attention to which fader yep. or something like that. And I've, and, and, you know, I mean, like I said, somebody in our uh, Facebook group uh, uh, mentioned that uh, pioneer has that on air or the off air capability, but I never noticed it. Like it, and, but within like 30, 20, 20 minutes of, of just poking around with this thing, I noticed it on, on this set. And I, and I kind of attribute that to because it's so bright, mm. you know, instead of the recessed lighting or, or even the dimmer lighting yeah. of, of the Pioneer units, or at least, that, like I said, that maybe that's just perception, but, um, but I really dig it. So we're sort of starting to talk about the mixer now. Sure. So um, let me read a couple of the features off here. Uh, the first thing they mentioned is the BPM effects section. Uh, with frequency controlled band isolation, so that's interesting. I guess you can kind of carve out the the sound frequencies of your effects okay. layer, perhaps. Sure. Uh, it's got dual USB, so makes it real nice for those switchovers between DJs or connecting multiple laptops or B two B or whatever you want to do. Yep. And that's the thing about this whole rig in general is like if you want to play USB sticks, you want to play on laptops, you want to play on this or that, it probably supports it if it's a, like a digital kind of format right um dedicated sweep and bpm effects knobs so this is kind of cool it's kind of like the pioneer mixer where they have the sound color effects where yep. it's like one knob uh effects sweeps um but they actually on the denon mixer they break it out into two separate things where you here's a filter and here's your one knob effects and then here's your regular effects section over here, right. your traditional ones. So if you're like me, where you use filters like tools all the time, uh, probably as much as EQ, <laughs> then oh. it's nice to have a dedicated knob for that. And then you can still do something, you know, add a dub echo or something cool over that filtered layer if you wanted to. Right. Um, expressive EQ, you can choose a classic or isolation mode. You can adjust the filter resonance. So if it's too harsh, you know, it has that kind of whoosh, whoosh, whoosh right. kind of noise to it, you can adjust that. Uh, the engine connect protocol for beat grid locked effects. So you could like effectively sync your effects as well, just like in software. Right. Uh, you've got the expressive Denon DJ flex fader crossfader, uh, which I've noticed is removable and replaceable. Yep. Uh, you can connect MIDI-based effects and instruments. It does have an actual traditional five-pin MIDI 
port yep. on the back. Right there. Uh, 24 bit, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. Uh, crisp OLED screen with screensaver mode for precise menu based adjustments. And that's another thing I will say is even the little teeny screens on the mixer just look so damn good. Yeah. Like they're really sharp, really readable. I love the, Not the, very... the font. Yeah, you know, not everything. very pixelated or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's very it's perfect. I mean, it's it's obviously not like it's not this. Right, it, you can see the pixels like a traditional kind of screen, but they're just so fine that it, it looks like a TV screen. Yep. Um, so yeah, those those little screens. Uh, one shows like effects information. The other shows like BPM timing, that kind of stuff. Uh, then we've got let's see what else. Four digital inputs for high-resolution audio mixing. It does support digital inputs yep. as opposed to your traditional RCA analog sound if you want to get crazy with it. Uh, and then that LAN hub, that Ethernet hub, where you can connect everything right to it and don't have to involve a bunch of other cables and power plugs. And or hubs for and that. all of that, yep. Um, and then rugged metal construction. So, so this thing's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, immediately... What I what you you mentioned it a few uh, features ago was uh, the dedicated uh, filter sweep section, and you know it was very foreign to me, um, and I didn't even realize that you could adjust the resonance. Um, but you know everybody knows the Pioneer filter sweep, like it's got a very signature resonant to it. <laughs> so. This is, so I'm going to go both high pass and low pass. So right now it's at 12 o'clock, and then I'm going to go uh, uh, high pass first, then come back to 12, and then go low. Cool. So everybody can hear it. Make sure you do a full cut, too. Mm-hmm. All right, so. I said that right as it goes into breakdown, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go we'll high pass just to. So you can tell there's a little resonant hump there. Not nearly as prominent. Right. So right now we're at about 2, heading into 3 o'clock. This is 3 o'clock. And right here the beat drops. So now we're back at 12. So I'm going to go back up to 3. And the only reason that I'm telling you what position the dial's in is because, um, you know, it's it's a pretty aggressive knob like it um that's what she said um, <laughs> i can't believe i didn't pick up on that one <laughs> um anyway so um the uh it, the, it, it is an aggressive filter suite so like at, at three o'clock that was a that i mean that that didn't have much further to go so here we go so this is one o'clock about two o'clock here. So, I mean, it sounds great. It really does. Right here in this range. I mean, it's not overbearing. That resonant, like, hump isn't terrible. So this and is three o'clock. it's not distorted like it sometimes is in those right, higher. Right, right. So right here is three o'clock, but anything past this. So it does a full kill. It does a full kill at about five o'clock. So coming back down, this is four and three. Two, one. So I haven't tried to do any adjustments on it yet, obviously, but the sound quality of it reminds me more of an Allen and Heath like a zone than it does a Pioneer. Right. Which is from me is high praise. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like, I mean much prefer that kind of sound. Like I said, I mean everybody knows that Pioneer. So going in the other direction though, so we're at twelve o'clock again. That's a breakdown. We didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> so, got ourselves a little baseline there. So, all right. So, from 12, now we're at 11, 10, 9. So, even at 9, I mean, that that's a really nice. I, I mean, like the way it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Eight. Filter is probably the thing I'm most picky about, so I'm pleasantly surprised. And seven is a full kill. Sorry, I talked over that last bit. You want to get that? No, you're fine. So that's eight. 
That's really nice. I mean, yeah. because without that resonant hump, when you're doing a low pass, like that's what you're getting. So if you're the type that likes to mix using filters rather than EQs, mm-hmm. I mean that. I mean that's a really clean signal that's coming through that doesn't have that you know that yeah added because there's oomph to it that that resonance is is a frequency spike right around the point of at, uh, at, at the w- cutoff yep um, but a lot of these filters also have a peakiness throughout the whole range where it's like if you bring it in here it's harsh and if you bring it up to you know up to nine o'clock it sounds this way and this is a very even yep kind of smooth uh, knob sweep which I really like so this is back up to nine so again like i said you know from 12 o'clock going down to nine and up to three that's a uh i mean it it it, it, that's a great range to play with just know that anything beyond nine and three is going to be you know you're getting into pretty harsh cuts at that point but you know going from so this is this is a sweep going from nine to twelve So you still get that, you know, that really classic signature filter sweep sound. It's just not as it's not as harsh as a Pioneer. So I wondered, okay, how do you adjust the resonance on that filter because there's no dedicated knob for it? Right. So I hit the utility button, and item number two is filter. So let's check that resonance. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, I wonder where that <laughs> setting is, and it, even though there's not a dedicated knob, it didn't take me more than a second to find it. So, okay, it's an actual number. So right now, resonance is set at 15, and that's from 0 to 15. So let's see what a 0 sounds like. I'm just going to do a 12 o'clock full high pass all the way up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's my shit right there. Yeah, that's super clean. Like that's not uh, that's my that's not my style. If I'm going to use a filter, I, I I prefer to have a little bit yeah, of that, most that signature kind of hump in the in in that uh, in that resonant uh, range or the cutoff range. But so if you do those quick sweeps, you don't get that kind of right, whoosh, right. right. I mean, it's, you have to listen for it. Right. And then uh, we'll do a low pass as well. I do like that for the mm-hmm. for the low. I'm really impressed with those filters. All right, so now let's let. I guess 15 was what it was before, so mm-hmm. it was maxed before. So we were hearing it at its most extreme before. Right. So that which, that gives the whole breadth of it, right? Right. There. Which still, like I said, I mean. It, it it still was not as aggressive as a as a pioneer. So yeah, that, I mean it wasn't even halfway there yeah. at max, um, which to me is a good thing. I just yeah, I, I like that. I think a lot a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I guess we could get a feel for the EQ in a similar way too, since we're doing sound samples. Oh, so I'm just looking at, so you've got your fingers over the loop buttons. Yeah, I was just going to make a manual loop, but... Well, you see, I was noticing you have a manual loop and an auto loop right Mm -hmm. here. So you could do a single knob click, kind of like tractor style if you wanted. It would grab a four bar, eight bar, something like that. And then you can adjust it, or you can do a manual in and out. Uh, Once again, kind of whatever method you like to do to set loops, they're going to, they're going to cater to it. Okay, so basically what just happened there was Trip set a uh, eight bar l- loop manually, but it was quantized, so it snapped right to beat, and that sounds like this. So here's what it sounds like. Uh, I'm gonna do a uh, a cut of the low, mid, and high EQs, and then we'll do boost and just see what that sounds like. So here's lows. That's all the way off. On. Off. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same for mids. Here's off. 
That also sounds pretty clean. Yeah. Has a real nice. I mean, it sounds kind of like their filter. I mean, uh, yeah. And here's the highs. Down. I like that because it doesn't take all the clarity out like some high EQ cuts would. Sure. And here's a little bit of a low boost. I'm not going to get crazy, but I'll do like halfway up here. Like a nine. Or a three o'clock, sorry. And then back to center. Subtle. And here's a mid boost. It actually keeps it pretty mild until you get way up to yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah. So like here's here's 9 o'clock, and then here's a full turn. So that just little bit, like a quarter turn, is where most of the action is there if you really want to exaggerate something. Yeah. You know what the, the nerd in me wants to see? The EQ curve. Yeah. Like I want it to be up on like a, a screen. Chart. Like I want to see like you, where. You want to draw it on the screen here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's your inner producer. All right. Uh, here's a highs boost. Yeah. And it sounds good. Even we're boosting the shit out of that. Yeah, either that or we've got severe hearing damage. <laughs> <laughs> a little column A, a little column B. <laughs> and then back to center. So, yeah, I mean, I'm happy with that. I assume that's the classic EQ model, and then they have an isolator version. Oh, and they, set, they have high and low crossovers for them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, what else? Sweep effects. We can try that. Sure. So here's uh, there's four of them kind of over where you expect the color effects uh, to be on a Pioneer. You've got uh, Dub Echo. So when I turn it on, nothing happens. But then when I sweep the knob, you'll hear effects applied to it. So. Okay. So it, depending on the position of the knob, it seems like it, it does a different... Um, size loop that it's kind of grabbing there so there's a little bit and if i just move it a little bit it'll do a fast like a okay yeah like that so that actually switches it to a full bar there. gotcha yeah okay so that's dub echo oh wait let's see what happens if we move the knob to the left So it's basically the same thing. It's just reversed. Right. Uh, then we've got noise. I assume this is going to be a white noise sweep. <laughs> There's your resonance. Right, right. Just in case a producer forgot to put a riser in. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of similar to the Pioneer. That's that's pretty harsh. Yeah. Um, it gives you a little bit more room to turn the knob mm -hmm. before it comes on. So right there, you can hear it a little bit. Here, I'll put it on a different channel. That's about 2 o'clock for the noise. And I barely touched it, and it quickly goes up. I'm going to barely touch it again. Like a thunderstorm or something. Right, now. right. All right, so it's pretty harsh. Yeah, that, that spike was 3 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, and then if you turn it left, again, yeah. it's just the reverse of that. So I don't want to hurt everybody's ears. But yeah. There. Oh, that sounds cool. That's, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> slick. Uh, so then we've got, whoop, still got the noise on. Uh, this one's called Washout. Oh, that's so you can do your echo out. Yep. Nice and simple. All right. <laughs> so that Fair is. Enough. Okay. Uh, turn to the left in case that's different. Uh, so it's just the length of the sample gotcha. that it grabs. Okay. Uh, and then we've got a gate. Interesting. Hmm. No, okay. So, so it works to the left. So the right doesn't seem to do anything. I'm not sure what what's up with that. Yeah, no clue. Maybe that's meant to be like a noise gate or something, but that would be a weird place to put it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, you know what I don't see? What's that? I mean, let me let me look around in the... Uh, I have to hit utility. Oh, you're looking for an effects. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I'm not seeing? Your favorite? 
my favorite. It's not on there. Really? Not that I see. I mean, unless they're calling it something else. That? No. Oh, well, yeah. That. I mean, no, that. <laughs> that's standard. Okay, I thought so, you were looking for the flanger. No, no. I, <laughs> I know where the flanger is. You can hide that. And that was the first thing three, you went for. <laughs> three menus deep, I know where the flanger is. Um, no, what I don't see, and thank you, Denon, for not doing it, is the air horn. Oh, <laughs> dedicated uh, air uh, horn. Uh, uh, <laughs> Like, come on. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, we're we're done with that. So, um, yeah. Uh, hashtag, it's back on you, Pioneer. Get that shit out of there. <laughs> All right. We're 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 at about an hour. We could probably maybe go through some of these main effects before we wrap up. You sure. Think, and sure. kind of see what some of those sound like. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Let's just assign the effects to Master because we're just playing one track. Um, and I see, so you've got a tempo tap button. Uh, of course, it will sync to the tempo um, on its own if it has that data. Um, you can adjust the effects time with its own dedicated knob, and then there's an effects frequency. That's probably akin to Pioneer's, um, oh, what do they call that? Parameter knob. Yeah. Uh, so whatever additional parameter they have for you to adjust for that effect will probably be on that besides tempo or something. One thing I did notice about this when, when I first uh, you know, got the lay of the land is that there's a touch strip here along the right side uh, for time division. So uh, on Pioneers and on other uh, uh, pro-grade mixers that have effects processors, um, you know, there's uh, been buttons that are dedicated to how you uh, how you set your time uh, division. So, like whether it's a whole beat or a quarter beat, an eighth beat. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like uh, the old school DJM 600. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure the the newer DJMs do the same uh, some version of this. But it was a button, and then there's like some sort of a indicator. So yeah, yeah. With this, it's um, uh, a touch pad. Divided up into eight squares, and each square has the number uh, backlit. So if you want it to be a one for one, or a two to one, four to one, eight to one, or in the other direction, half down to a sixteenth. Just like you would for loops. Or right, exactly. So, and all you have to do is touch it, and and it will follow your your finger up to whatever and then uh whatever you set it to it's reflected in the touch or in the uh in the lcd screen so it's got little like bumps on there which right, i assume so you can kind of tactile, yeah, tactile feel your way thing. feel your way up and down yeah that's cool oh it's, it's actually meant to like t tap yep i see yep cool okay so let's see well let's go with the flanger man so we've got a wet dry knob here Max. <laughs> Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> so, so I guess we just hit this BPM effects button here. Yep. Oh. oh. Wow. That's, that's that's pretty. That's flangy as hell. Yeah. So. So, so you're messing is, with the effects the frequency. frequency. Yeah. Of the effects. And then. Okay. So the time is literally how long it takes to get through right. that flanging motion. Yep. You can do a real slow one like that. All right. Yeah, that's a pretty aggressive flanger. But the other cool thing is, as you're like adjusting the knobs and stuff, the little screen is changing to reflect the changes you're making to the effects. So like, there's a little like, I'd call it a progress bar. Yep. You know, that slides up and down as you move the knob, which is just a nice little touch. It shows you exactly the frequency you're cutting off at, which is kind of neat, which is something that you wouldn't get in a Pioneer mixer on the display. It's like, oh, this is a 22 kilohertz cutoff point or something like that. And, I mean, you, you can hear how I'm just, you know, ripping that knob back and forth, and uh, the screen is super responsive. I mean, there's yeah, no latency in immediate. any of that. Cool. Yeah, I like that. I mean, it's a it, that's a really aggressive flanger. Um, I don't think I would use that for anything but trance. But <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, it has a built-in filter there. We kind of know what the filters sound like. That's probably just a way to automate it if you want to sync it to a BPM and do a sweep. Um, here's a phaser. Oh, that's nice. So that right there is about the halfway setting on the frequency. 
pretty aggressive, yeah. pretty resonant. And that's only, what, between 2 and 3 o'clock on the wet dry. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It, these effects are really aggressive. Yeah, but you can make them less aggressive. So let's turn that a fre frequency down. Yeah. Then it's almost just a little percussive element exactly. back there. Yep. And of course, you could adjust the time on that to make it slower or faster if you wanted. Not bad. Bit crusher. That's interesting. That's more like a filter. Filter, yeah. It's not the effect I would expect from a from a bit crusher. It is not. Hmm. Less impressed with that. Uh, reverb. That sounded like a delay. Let me sync that tempo. It doesn't sound right. Adjust the time on it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. That has a delay in it. Yeah, like the uh, an echo effect right, on right. top of yeah, it. Yeah, that, I, I, I tend to just want a tail. Right, right. That. Yeah, that's that's entirely uh, again another one of their effects that's a little too. Um, too aggressive unless there's you know if you go into utility there's effects there on number five effects return beat break edit Noise effects list low. customize flanger flanger hmm. flanger flanger, 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 flanger. <laughs> all right i don't care for that reverb yeah being honest same uh there's a roll <laughs> what, what am i doing wrong there interesting Oh, so it wants to use the time division, uh, the touch pad thingy. Yeah. Here we go. Huh. Yeah, I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beat break. This would be interesting. Mm. All right, so I'm going to adjust the frequency. That almost acts more like a wet dry. Oh, so it's actually showing on the screen what it's doing. It's got a little sequencer up here, and it's showing a pattern. It's going uh, three, three, three off, three or one, one, one off, one, one, one off, one, one, one off, like that. So it's it's like doing some sort of echo on the first three beats. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I think if you got that dialed in, that could be fun. Yeah, right. Kind of like a live remixy kind of tool and then there's a scratch let's see what that I heard it do it once oh here we go hmm. well, that's weird that seems like more trouble than it's worth to me. Yeah. They, their old mixer had a scratch effect like that, and I could just never get anything good out of it. Hmm. Hall echo. Hall echo. Okay. I was like, it's weird because one of the L's is backwards. Yeah. It's like a weird <laughs> branding thing or something. Okay, so... Interesting. I have everything off right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been grabbing this again, like yeah. eight, eight bars. There yeah, we go. Yeah. There's a half bar. 
we're obviously not perfectly synced up here, but ping pong. Yeah. The idea there. Uh, transform. We get a little transform. Just kind of gates it. These are all basic, so I'm just kind of skimming through them. Yeah. And then we're back to flanger. Ooh, look at that. Woo, woo, woo. So there you have it. Those are the effects. So, and then the back on the player. So another uh, another feature that um, that we didn't go over uh, is with the um, with the players. You can actually set ranges for your uh, pitch bend or for your uh, tempo. Oh, your, yeah, your pitch range. Uh, so like right now we've got it set at ten percent. So. This is at negative 10% from 128, I believe. With key lock on, obviously. Yep, with key lock on. And then that's up to 140. Now taking key lock off. But um, this is a really... So then if we take it up to 20%, Dope. Yeah. I mean, that's still... Uh, uh, why don't you bust a little freestyle for us? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't do it. <laughs> I won't get to it. So the one of the things about uh, when you get into these uh, lower ranges, especially when you do uh, a key lock, is that um, you can get into some really weird um, uh, artifacts. Mm-hmm. So this is turning key lock back on. The original track runs at about 128 uh, at pitch zero. This is 20% down. So it's, it's sitting at about 102. So you can hear a little bit of phasing in that, in you those can high hats. hear it, but it's not bad. Right. Like you switch that to mono and put it on a club system, nobody's gonna know the difference. Yeah. And then alternatively, that's up to 153. They know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They, they just, just strut. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now that's pretty impressive, because yeah. especially the low end, because I mean, you took that to an extreme. Nobody, yep. very few people are going to mix something at minus 20. Right. So, right. Um, and it still sounded pretty solid, and we're listening in headphones in a quiet environment, and, right. and still, it's like we kind of had to listen for it. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, it really, as far as sound quality goes, to me, the mixer ticks all the boxes. There's a couple of effects I don't like yep. the nature of, but they all sound good. Yeah. Um, yeah. For I mean, for me, like, I've I've gotten away from using so many. Um, uh, uh, from using so many effects for the most part, if I do use uh, effects, then I, I usually just put them in so uh, subtly mm-hmm. that, like, uh, so... It's like to generate a build or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if I'm doing some sort of, like, a trick. So, like, I'll put, like, a, you know, a delay effect on and then bounce back and forth between a couple of channels to get a couple of, you know, crazy layers going to get people riled up and then you know, go and then take, take all that effect away and then go, it goes back to the mix. So uh, for me, like one, you know, huge point, no air horn. Great. <laughs> take it away from everybody. Nailed it. Um, but you know, for most of these other effects, um, it's a pretty harsh, uh, pretty extreme set of, of, uh, effects. So it's not something that I think I would use a whole lot. Now, if they, and and so caveat to that is that they may very well be customizable or configurable in the utility screen. So maybe it's just a matter of getting down in there and seeing what's configurable. Right. Um, yeah, this was, like you said, it was the, in the nature and the spirit of an unboxing. Like, right. bam, here's this. We don't know much about it other than what we've read on paper. Let's figure it out. Right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, for all intent and purposes, it's, it, 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 I mean, 
It, it does. It, it checks all those boxes. Um, and it looks great. It feels professional. It feels good. Like, I mean, you're not going to uh, scratch it. I mean, you'll scratch it up if you intentionally scratch it up. But, I mean, it's not some cheap piece of plastic that yeah. is going to is gonna bust up. Yeah, the finish, feels dirty. Yeah, the finish is, is consistent all the way across, so it feels like a, a set of pro gear. Um, you know, I... Uh, for me, like, uh, just having, this, like I said, this is the most I've actually sat and played with it, you know, yeah. in, in, in the week or so that I've had it. Um, so, I mean, uh, the more that I'm playing with it, I mean, I, I really do like it. And, and I see why it's so attractive. Um, I mean, do you feel the the needle moving, or is it still too early to tell? Like, I think it's is, too early to is tell. Is it like the Apple thing where we're, you're going to be pushed over the edge one day and be yeah? Be all uh, well, in? <laughs> I mean, so one thing that Denon has in their favor, it, as far as I'm concerned, I already own it, so <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting right here in front of me. Okay, right. fine. And now um, that you do, it would be a hard sell to pay twice as much or whatever, three to, times as much to get yeah, less functionality. Right, back to right. that old song and dance. Yeah, and I mean because. Especially once I get a chance to really uh, stress test like record box um, uh, compatibility, um, then it really is a matter of, okay, you know, the layout's pretty much the same as long as I remember when I'm playing on Pioneer gear, where my loops and hot cues and all of that kind of stuff is, okay, fine, you know, then... You know, I, I can use this at home and have paid a third of the price yeah. of, you know, a full Nexus setup um, or, or not even a full setup because here with two players, you're getting four decks. Yeah, it's like, you know, virtually um, versus like a setup and a half. Right, right. Versus if I want four deck functionality with Pioneer, I have to get four, four decks. So then you're talking, what, 10 grand? You know, by the time you get, you know, uh, taxes and shipping yeah, and all that. It's a hard sell. That. Yeah. Yeah. So you did mention the record box thing. We did take the time to update the firmware before we started recording. Yep. So it should support importing a record box library. I've got one right here. Should support. A small one on USB <laughs> if we want to try it. Sure. <clears throat> so I don't know if I need to do anything special for I just pop it in here like anything else. So let's just do that. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's two in one episode. It is. <laughs> okay, existing music collection found on No Name, which is what it's called. Would you like to import? The player will be unavailable during the import. Matching playlists and track metadata will be overwritten. Matching playlists and track metadata will be overwritten. Interesting. All right. Yes. Send it. All right. So, let's see. I just hit source there's no name usb1 that's me there it is she gave me love audio fly boom so it looks right it still seems like it's analyzing the track as we load it it's kind of loading the waveform in chunks Whereas if it had already, it's obviously not importing the analyzed track data from Recordbox or else it would pop up like that. Sure. Um, the thing that's hard to test here is I don't think I had any cue points set on this particular <laughs> hmm. little collection. So I don't know if it brought those in or not. And notice that since we are um, actually on um, your thumb drive, now it's showing album art in, yes. the, in the platter instead of the customized logo. Okay, so when it first loaded, it was analyzing the track, or it was importing the library. It said the player will be unavailable while this is happening. Yeah. It let me start playing, but then it analyzed the track. So that's good to know. It just wasn't responsive to the pitch there until we started it again. So skip ahead. Yeah, that sounds better. So it's there, but I don't know. Well, it's bringing something in because it's got my star ratings. Because I, I do that thing where you use the star ratings to rate the energy of the track. Mm -hmm. you know, so five is like peak and so on. Uh, so it brought those in. So that that's something. And I mean, it didn't. 
it didn't cry about it at all. Like it didn't throw it didn't even mention record box. It just brought it in. Right. They might not be allowed to mention it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyhow, I did see metadata. I saw my star rating, so it must sure. be doing something, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely something that uh, that's the, that's the next thing I want to play with because if I can, like, I, while I get that this thing will work with Serato, and that's great for my DBS, um, if I can get a if I can get away with, you know, only using Serato at home for DBS and further consolidate everything to record box and have it work both at home and at, at gigs. And that, that's another win for me. Yeah. Depending on how much of that stuff truly stays. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would say for now, um, I mean, first impressions, it's, it's a, it's a solid buy. Uh, it looks and feels and plays like pro gear. Everything is like super responsive. Uh, hardly any latency in, in anything. Um, you know, I mean, whatever couple of hiccups that we've uh, come across. Uh, again, the firmware updating um, was a little tricky on the mixer. Flawless and, and smooth as silk on, on the players. Um, but yeah, so so far, you know, for around the two thousand dollar mark used, um, you know, for all three pieces, uh, you know, two thousand to twenty five hundred, depending on you know what you can find out there, um, you know, that's about the price of, uh, uh, you know, around or slightly over the price of one Pioneer unit in the <laughs> Nexus setup. So, I mean, for us to be able to get all of that functionality and then some. Uh, you know, the few, you know, things that are like, eh, you know, I, I think it's worth it. You know, some some of their effects and, and stuff like that, they, you know them when you hear them. So they've got a signature sound mm -hmm. to it. So you know what you're getting and you know how to work with True. it. And uh, there's that familiarity of the layout that, I mean, you know, if you know a Pioneer mixer, you know, from the DJM 500 on, then you can close your eyes and pretty much work with it. You know, whereas this, it's the same type of layout, but, you know, like the channels are a little bit more compressed into this, like, little, you know, runway here. And, you know, it, it, they're different knobs and all that. So it's just a matter of getting yeah. used to something different from a tactile, you know, touch and feel kind of uh, uh, aspect. But, I mean, if you're the type of DJ that, you know, has played a bunch of gigs at a bunch of public places, you know, clubs and raves and warehouse parties, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, if you know your way around a mixer and have, have put your hands on plenty of them, then th this one will be no problem. All right, man. Well, I think that's a wrap. Yes, sir. Uh, let's... Have some fun playing with us over the next day or two and see if uh, if our good first impressions truly carry through after some uh, rigorous use. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Let's beat it up. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I think uh, the way to summarize this is uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, take care. This has been the Passionate DJ Podcast. Keep on spinning. Easy. Ha, ha, ha.